So not only do I want to know what is the correct answer uh, to the question to do the classification, but I, I also want to know what is the confidence score in my prediction. That is what is the probability that the answer is correct. So in the first two cases, uh, I can say the conf confidence or the probability is 100%. In the third case, it's I can say it's most probably a horizontal line. And in the fourth case, the probability or the confidence score is just 50%. So uh, by looking at uh, these two values, I can draw all these conclusions. But uh, here I have just uh, uh, the number of classes in my data set is just two. That is just horizontal or vertical line. But in instead, if you take some practical cases, for example, ImageNet competition, it has thousand classes. And how many images do you have? You have more than 100,000 images. So if you want to calculate the confidence score for all the thousand classes for all these images, I can't keep looking at all the values and then do draw all these conclusions. There has to be a much efficient way of doing it. For, the, for doing that, to calculate the probabilities or the confidence score, you can employ what is known as softmax. Let me first explain how the softmax computation is done. Let's say you have two values 4 and 0 for which you want to compute the softmax. You first what you do is you take the exponent of these two values. That is e to the power of 4 and e to the power of 0. And you need to take the sum of these two values. So s is equal to e to the power of 4 plus e to the power of 0. This is the first step. And in the next step what you do is you normalize these two values. That is you take e to the power of 4 by sum and here e to the power of 0 by sum. These are the normalized results. And this is nothing but the output of your softmax function. So it's a very simple two step process. Now for example, if you are, uh, if the output of your fully connected layer is 4 and 0, instead of 40 and uh, 0, I just took uh, the values 4 and 0. So the computation is easier. The softmax output will be 0.98 and 0 0.018. Now you have to observe few things about this softmax. The first thing is that irrespective of whatever be your input values, your output will always be between 0 and 1. So the same thing can be observed in all the cases. And the second thing is, sum of all the outputs will always equal 1 in all the cases. Okay, so that's the second observation. And uh, third thing is, uh, my actual intention was to calculate the probability. So these numbers, the output of softmax directly translates to the probability score. That is the confidence score of my prediction. So in this case, if the values are 4 and 0, the 4, obviously this is the winner. This is the higher of the two scores. But here I can also get the confidence score that is here it is 98%. But if the values are close to each other, somewhat close to each other compared to the previous case, we can see that the confidence score in this case reduces slightly. So the same thing can be observed here. Here uh, the confidence score in my prediction is not 100% but it's, uh, but it's pretty high. So how high? You can give a number now using softmax, it's 88%. And you will also observe that as these two values start getting close to each other, the confidence score starts coming down. So here when it is 2.2 and 1.8, the confidence score has come to almost 60%. And finally, when they are equal, it's 50-50. The probability or confidence score is just 50%. So that's the third point about uh, softmax. This was this was my main intention and I got what I, whatever I was looking for. Now you have one more advantage of using softmax. Uh, it's possible that some of your fully layer co uh, filter coefficients are negative. So in such cases, even your even the output of your fully connected layer can also be negative. Even even in this case, even when uh, even if the values are negative, your softmax output will still be between zero and one. And it's the same case even if there is a mixture mixture of positive and negative cases, your output still will still be ranging between zero and one. So basically, the sign does not uh, matter here and only the relative differences between these values matter. And softmax naturally scales for any number of classes. Let's say you have six different classes in your dataset and you are trying to do the classification. For this image, let's say these are the values that you got. There is one negative values, the rest are all positive. And only these two values are high, the rest are low. So in such cases, it's it's very difficult or very tedious to look at these numbers and calculate the probabilities or confidence scores for your answers. But here using for, uh, softmax, we can see that these are the probability scores for the first two cases and for all other cases, it's very close to zero. And now for this image, the scores are high for hippo, rhino and elephant 
and for all others it's uh, very low or even negative so even in this case it doesn't matter i can just do the softmax and compute the probabilities so the top two probabilities are for these two cases and for elephant uh, it's still very low it's almost less than uh, 1% sorry 10% so this is how uh, by using the softmax at the end of a fully connected layer you not only have the correct answer but you also have the confidence scores now another advantage of uh, softmax is by using this uh, confidence score you it's very easy to do the non max separation to do the computations for non max separation this uh, nms topic we have already seen in the third chapter in case you have not uh, taken the chapter i have provided the link for this video in the description